We are closing in on 100 episodes of the Life Writers Vlog. Amazing. I didn't know it would be so popular and that I would continue doing it this long. If you haven't already weighed in on what we should do to celebrate the 100th episode, please post your ideas in the comments section below. I think we need to do something special to commemorate this milestone. Today, as we do on the first Thursday of every month, we crack open my book, Eating an Elephant, Write Your Life One Bite at a Time, and see what we can learn. This month, I landed on a short bite, but one that's really important to giving our stories life and not bogging down the reader. Hi, my name is Patricia Chapontier and welcome to episode 94 of the Life Writers Vlog where you can find inspiration and useful tips to help you write your life stories. We are flipping through the 200 bytes of information about how you can better write your life stories and I landed on bite number 61 for this week. It's called Say It With Meaning. And I have an entire section in this book dedicated to writing dialogue. Just the idea of writing dialogue makes a lot of people turn tail and run. But it's not that scary or difficult to do. People usually think they have to know exactly what words were spoken to accurately write dialogue. But that's not the case. Dialogue is reconstructed conversation, not verbatim conversation. Today, we are talking about one aspect of dialogue, but I always feel like I need to remind people you can write dialogue based on a remembered conversation, even if you don't recall every word spoken. That's why we call it reconstructed speech. But I digress. Bite 61 focuses on how we should leave out meaningless exchanges when we reconstruct conversation. They might be truthful and they might be accurate, but how much does it add? It sounds obvious, leave out meaningless exchanges, but sometimes we don't think to do that. I can tell you when editing writer's dialogue, I often recommend they cut out several lines so each line has an impact and adds to the meaning of the story. We think conversation needs to sound realistic, and it does, but we don't need to circle the pool before we jump in. For example, let me read the section of dialogue I put in so you can get a sense of what I mean. This is from Byte 61. Hi, Grandma. What are you doing? I asked as soon as she picked up the phone. Not much. It's good to hear from you, darling, she said. What have you been up to? Nothing different. Same old stuff, I answered. How's Grandpa? About the same. No changes since we last talked. Is he stable now? I asked. He seems to be, but I think he's ready to go, she whispered. You might want to come down here before too long. Now, when did you get interested in that section? Probably it was at least halfway through or maybe even the last couple of lines before you felt interested in what was being said. All those niceties and the preliminary back and forth are not needed. They don't add anything to our understanding of what's important and what's going on in this conversation. Easily, all the highs, what are you doing, not much kind of talk can be cut out. That conversation could easily begin with, how's grandpa? The weight of that phone call rests on the last exchange between my grandmother and me. When I wrote for newspapers, we always heard, don't bury the lead. Don't bury the lead which means don't wait until the eighth or the ninth paragraph to say what's most important to the article. The same is true with dialogue. Adding in all the niceties is in effect burying the lead. 
Not always, but usually you need some text that leads into the conversation. It might be information the reader needs to know for the conversation to make sense, like who the characters are, sometimes the situation being discussed, but don't drown your dialogue in exchanges that don't serve the purpose for writing that particular piece of dialogue. So what do you say? Do you routinely write dialogue or do you have to push yourself to include it in your stories? When editing, do you find you need to cut unnecessary lines of conversation that aren't required? Or do you cut right to the heart of the matter and say what needs to be said? Tell us how you go about writing and editing your dialogue and what you've learned about writing dialogue that's made it easier for you. Use the comments section below to tell us about your experience with dialogue. But remember, dialogue or no dialogue, the only way to do this wrong is to not do it at all. The only way to do this wrong is to not do it at all. So until next time, happy writing, everybody. Don't miss the next episode. Sign up to be notified of future posts and upcoming events. Use the buttons below to share this episode on social media or with a friend who might like it. If you enjoyed this week's episode, you will love our Life Writers membership. Whether you don't know where to start writing your life stories, have started and stopped many times, or have been writing but want to receive feedback to make your stories better, the Life Writers membership is where you need to be. We have a Get Started Roadmap, an extensive library of instructional videos, live events via Zoom, and a supportive and active community. If you want to take the stories that live in your heart and mind and put them into words on the page, check out Life Writers at lifewriters.us.